Hey what's up guys how's it going in today's video you're going to learn about internationalized routing in Next.js and how to translate your content from one language to another language using a package called Next.it Next. But before we get started please consider like this video and subscribe to my channel it really helps me a lot. So without further ado let's get started. Alright guys so I have this basic startup project. You can find this project on github, I'll put the link on the description. Use the starter branch for the starter code and get the final branch for the final code. I will open up the package.json file. I have only installed an extra package called next IIT next. This package will be used for translating our data. But we will go through that later in this video. But first let me show you how you can add locals in your Next.js project. So let's just go over the Next.js documentation quickly. So this is the documentation page for Next.js internationalized routing. Now Next.js has built in support for internationalized routing or I18N since version 10. To get started of internationalized routing, we need to set locals. Now what is a local? Suppose you live in US and your language is English, then your local will be en-us. This first part is the language and the second part is the region. You don't have to specify a region, you can just simply specify the language if the region doesn't matter to you. For example here, the local name is NL which represents Dutch without any kind of specific region. Now you can add whatever locals you want, you have to add them in your next config file. So just go to the next config file. Actually, let me just increase the font size for you. Okay, now I think the font size is big enough. So we have this next config object. We need to add another property here, which is called i18n. And inside this object, we need to specify the locals. So just pass locals. And this locals will be an array of strings. The strings are the names of the local. So in my case, I'm just going to pass en for English and bn for Bengali. And you can also set our default local. I'm gonna set default local to English. Now, how do you manage these locals? There are two ways you can manage these locals. One is subpath routing. Another one is domain routing. Let me show you the domain routing first. Now, the domain routing will look like this. Suppose the default local is English or slash en. Then if the user goes to example.com slash blog, then the local will be en or english and if the user go to example.fr then the local will be france or if the user go to example.nl then the local will be dutch so whatever the domain extension will be the local will be equal to that okay now i'm not going to show you how to use the domain routing i'm going to show you how you can use locals in subpath routing the subpath routing looks like this so if the user goes to domain slash blog, then the local will be the default local. In this case, it will be English US. If the user goes to slash fr slash blog, then the user local will be fr or French. Okay, so that's how this subpath routing actually works. And you can get the current local using the use router hook. Okay, so let's see what are in the documentation. You can also have automatic uh, local detection using uh, accept language header. Uh, you can uh, learn about this from the documentation, but I'm not going to go over them. You can also use Next.js middleware to manipulate the locals, but that is beyond this video. And just like I've told you, you can access the local information using the user router hook, which I'll go over in a minute. And also this uh, transition between locals, which I will also go through. Alright, so I have talked enough about the Next.js i18n. So let's see how we can use them in our code. So we have already added these locals and I will close all of these files. And let's go to the pages directory and let's go to index.js. So in this file, we have bunch of code. I have commented out most of them. So basically we have imported the user data hook, the Next.js link component, and we have called the user data hook. We've got two properties and a method, the local property, the locals array, which is also a property and the push method, which will be used to redirect user from one route to another route. 
Then we have this empty hand click function, which I'll talk about in a minute. Then we have this h1 tag, which will just print out our current local. And if I go to the browser, you can see that the local current local is printed out on the browser screen, which is en. Okay. And uh, I have commented out most of the code, so I will uncomment this part. So basically we have this h3 which says with use router and we have another h1 and we have looped over the locals array and if I go to the browser we have this two button en and bn. Now this two button are hooked up with this handle click function. This handle click function will take l or local as a parameter so we have, so we have passed the local which will return us this up function. This function will be used for on click which is totally empty for now. So now let's see how we can change our current local. There are two ways you can do this. One way is to use the use router hook. Another way you can do this by using the Next.js link component. So let's first see how we can do that using the push method. So I will go inside this function body. So I will call this push method. And the first argument of the push method is the URL where you can redirect your user. But I don't want to redirect my user to any other route. I want to just change the local. So I'm just gonna leave it as my current route, which is just slash. To change the local, you need to pass two more arguments to the push method. The second argument will be a mask URL, but we don't need that. You can just pass undefined here. And the third argument will be an object. And inside the object, you can specify the local. So I'm just gonna pass local. And local will be L. Okay, so let's see if that changes our current local or not. So if I click on EN, nothing should happen. But if I click on BN, the current local should turn it to BN. So let's click on it. And you can see that our current local is now BN. And if you notice the current route, the current route is slash BN. If I click on EN again, now our current local is EN and the current route is slash. So this is how you can change the local using the push method. Let me give you another example. I will comment this on and I will copy this and this time the redirect URL will be slash about. I have already an about.jsx file. Everything is almost commented out but if you go to slash about it will show you the current local. So let's save the file and if I click on slash en it takes me to the slash about page and it says the current local is en and there is a go to home link using the Nexus link component which will take me to the home page and now I'm back again in my home page if I click on pn now my current local is pn and the route is slash pn slash about and let's go back again now my current local is en okay so that's how you can change the current local using the push method but you might ask a question what if I specify the local in this route in the first argument well, you can do this, but it's not recommended because because it might have some weird behavior. So you can do something like this. And you don't pass any other arguments and this might work, but it is not recommended because it can give you some weird behaviors. So that is not recommended. So not recommended. So now that we know how to change the local using the push method, let's see how we can do the same thing using the Next.js link component. So I will comment this again and I will uncomment this out again. So again, we have pretty much the same thing, but this time instead of button, we have used Next.js link component. The href is slash. We have passed another prop, which is called local. And we have also passed the local here. So if you click on this link, it will take you to the route that you have specified in the href prop and also the local will be changed. So let's see if that works or not. So we don't have those two buttons. We have this two link. If I click on en, nothing happens. But if I click on bn and now the local is bn and the route is slash bn. If I click on en again, now our current local is en. So that's how you can change the local using the Next.js link component. So now that we have learned how to change locals using both Next.js link component and use routers push method, now let's see how we can really translate content of our page. So I will just comment this out again. 
and I will uncomment this part. This is almost same as before, but this time the href is slash about. So this links will take us to the about page using the specified local. So if I click on bn, now our current route is slash bn slash about. That makes sense. So let's see how we can translate content. That's why we have installed uh, this package next i18 next. To use it, we need to create another file inside the root of our project. And the file name will be next-i18next.config.js. And let's open that up. And let's also open up the next config file. Um, let's export an object, module.exports. And inside the object, we need to specify the exact same thing, this i18n object. So I will cut this from here and I will paste it here. And let's just import this entire object to our next config file. So import, sorry, not import, const i18n from require from next i18 next dot config and let's add the i18 to our next config so now that we have changed our next config we need to restart the server so yarn dev to restart the server and uh, let's just refresh the page okay everything is working so I will close these files. Now let me just quickly show you the documentation of the next IIT next package. So this is the GitHub page and if I scroll down here you'll find almost everything that you need to know. You need to add translation content in this file structure which I'll go over in a minute. We have added this config. Um, then you need to go to the underscore app file and wrap your entire app with this app with translation higher order component so let's just copy this and let's go to the package.json sorry underscore app.js let's import that and let's just wrap the my app with app with translation so my app and now we need to add our translation content just like this. You need to add the translation to the public directory. Inside the public directory, you need to have a locus directory. And inside the locus directory, you need to have more subdirectories. And the subdirectory name has to be the local that you are using on the config. For my case, it is pn and en. And if I expand one of this directory, it has two files. One is common.json and another one is about.json. Now what are these JSON files? If I open up the about.json, it is containing the translation data. If I open up the ENs uh, about.json file, it is the same thing. They are just translation data. Now the keys of the translation has to be same. For example, here hello world is the key. And also on another about.json file, hello world is the key. So these keys needs to match. If you don't match the keys, translation won't work. Now why did I name these files about.json? It doesn't has to be about.json. These files are actually called namespace. So you can add different types of translation to different namespaces or JSON files. You don't have to add all of the translation data in a single JSON file. For example, if you want to store all of the translation related to home page, you can create a home.json file. If you want to store all of the translation about the about page, you can store them in the about.json file. Now one thing that is required is the common.json file because when the translation package will not found any translation in the namespaces file, then it will look for translation in the common.json file. You can totally leave it as empty or you can add some common translation data here. Doesn't really matter, but the file needs to be there. Then the next step will be to go to the page that we want to translate. So I will go to the about page or the about file. You need two things. You need this use translation hook from next next and the server side translation function from next slash server side translations. Then you need to add another function. It can be get static props or it can be get server side props. Depends on your use case. So I will uncomment this one. 
So the get static props function uh, takes a parameter called context and inside the context we have this uh, local property. This will be the current local and then you need to uh, return an object and there will be another object called props and inside the props you need to spread out another object which will come from the server side translations function. It will return us an object and we need to spread that out. We need to pass the current local and then you need to pass an array and this array will be array of namespaces. With this you can specify that this page will only get access to the about namespace and it doesn't have to be only one namespace you can add multiple namespaces and if you want to pass more props to the component you can pass them here okay then you need to use the use translation hook I will uncomment this one so we have called the use translation hook and we have passed the namespace that we want to access we want to access the about namespace so that's why we have passed it here and this use translation function will return you an object and that object has a method called t t stands for translation t is the common convention but i don't really like a function name as t so i have renamed it as translate so now i want to translate a text called hello world so I have called the translate function and I have passed the exact same key that I have added in the namespace file. Hello world. Hello world. And we have another link which will take us to the home route but also it will maintain the current local. So let's see if the translation really works or not. So let's go to about page with the English local. And our text has been printed out. Hello world. Let's go to home. And let's go again to the about page but this time using Bengali local. And now you can see that the translation has been printed out. The translation of hello world is Ohebi show. And if I click on this below link, now it takes me to the home but the current local is PN. So this is how you can translate the content in Next.js. There are many other configurations that you can do with the next site in next package. Uh, but I won't go over them. Just read through the documentation. Okay. So um, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. So if the video has been helpful for you, don't forget to like, share and uh, subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.